Maps of climate change vulnerability can help decision makers identify places with high vulnerability that are in need of climate change adaptation measures. Understanding the combinations of the three drivers that contribute to spatial patterns of vulnerability, exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity can provide additional information for the development of interventions. I'm going to present the results of a climate change vulnerability map mapping exercise for Mali, West Africa conducted by season for the U.S. Agency for the International Development. As you may know, Mali is a very low-income country in the Sahel region of West Africa. Compared to many other countries, it is highly vulnerable to climate change. The region's climate is characterized by extremes, mostly drought, but also occasionally floods. The project aimed to identify the parts of Mali with the highest vulnerability. To develop the vulnerability map, we needed to combine spatial data layers from multiple sources, including those from CDAC, and integrate those with a number of climate and biophysical data layers. Since a major goal of CDAC is to facilitate the integration of socioeconomic and remotely sensed data, I will be highlighting some of the data layers that are derived from remote sensing instruments. Okay, so let's look at some of the input data layers and methods and then describe the res overall results. We considered vulnerability to be comprised of three components, exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity. We took raw data layers and recoded them on a 0 to 100 scale and such that 100 equated with highest vulnerability and zero, 0 equated with lowest vulnerability. We averaged the scores for all the indicators in each component and then averaged the components together produce an overall vulnerability map. Our exposure layers included six climate-related indicators, including average annual precipitation, the interannual variability in precipitation, and long-term temperature trends. Two of the additional layers, variation in greenness and flood frequency, were derived from the NASA MODIS instrument. Our sensitivity layer included a number of poverty, health, conflict, and agricultural data layers, including household wealth, child stunting, conflict events, and soil quality. The soil quality data are partly derived from MODIS data, and this component also included a CDAC data set, subnational infant mortality rates. Our lack of adaptive capacity layers included indicators such as the education level of mothers, market accessibility, and irrigated areas. This component included one CDAC data set, Anthropogenic Biomes Version 1, which provides some indication of livelihood zones. The results for each component are shown in the following three maps. The exposure layer reflects the south to north gradient of decreasing rainfall and increasing rainfall variability with higher vulnerability in the north. The sensitivity component reflects a pattern of generalized high to moderately high sensitivity across most of Mali, with pockets of lower sensitivity in the east and west as well as around Bamako, Mali's capital. The high sensitivity in the southeastern portions of Mali reveals the influence of high infant mortality in this region. This region is also comparatively more densely settled, as can be seen from the CDAC data product gridded population of the world, also known as GPW. Lastly, the lack of adaptive capacity component has a fairly clear gradient with adaptive capacity declining with distance from Bamako and from the Niger River. The results are, here are not overly surprising, reflecting the density of health posts and road infrastructure in the areas around Bamako in southeastern Mali. Turning to the overall vulnerability map, Generally, vulnerability proceeds in a south to north gradient with lowest vulnerability in extreme south and around Bamako and gradually increasing vulnerability northward with the exception of some areas of moderately low vulnerability in the Niger Delta and along the Niger River. Using CDAC's GPW dataset, we found that approximately 40% of Mali's population resides in areas classified as medium vulnerability that is in the yellow areas on the maps, and 32% reside in medium-high vulnerability, that is the orange areas on the maps. Only 6% reside in areas of highest vulnerability, 
in these areas tend to be much more sparsely populated than areas of lowest vulnerability, making development interventions particularly difficult in those areas. This spatial assessment demonstrates that socioeconomic, climatic, and biophysical factors may interact in complex ways to produce vulnerability to climate change impacts. Such maps can be helpful in better targeting locations of climate adaptation and economic development interventions. We welcome you to visit CDAC's website for datasets and more examples of our data use and data integration.